to, to my knowledge, if you go to any other perfumery course in the world, yeah, you will learn the Givaudan School, Shanghai, yeah, uh, Isipka, yeah, in Versailles, the Prodorom School in Grasse, yeah, you will learn what is called the Jean Carles method, yeah. The Jean Carles method is a great, a great method. A lot of perfumers have trained with this method. When they talk about the structure of a perfume, they talk about that classic. triangle with the top, middle, and bottom note. And the John Carl method says that you use one th you build your base, one third, yeah, and then you build your, your heart, one third, and then you finish it off with the top notes. I mean, obviously, that's a very simplified version of it, and it's yeah, um, and it's a system that has been taught to most perfumers. The problem for me with that is one is this this top note, middle note, bottom note thing. Everything is a top note. Yeah. It's also that it doesn't tell you why you're choosing materials. That's his biggest weakness. So. You're sitting in a room, in a darkened room, waiting for inspiration. No. Uh, having, having said that, I didn't get taught this method because most perfumers learn in situ in a company. You get, you get a job and then you, you pick it up. Yeah? And fortunately, I work for a, a small company, so I had to think for myself. Yeah? And it was only when I came to Asia that I started to think about how, how I did it. And I had read about the John Carl's method, but I could never see where the inspiration would come from. Yeah? It's not telling me. So the purpose of the mind map yesterday was to give you inspiration, how to develop. You have a picture, and now how do you turn that into a smell? Yeah? But a little bit like a language, yeah? we also need a syntax or a grammar to put the things together. Yeah, to build it. So this top note, middle note, bottom note thing is good for seeing the balance of the perfume as a whole. Yeah? Does, it, does it evaporate in an even line and things like this? Yeah? But it definitely doesn't evaporate as three, three notes as we saw yesterday. So I'm going to suggest a, a different method. This method is based on uh, your schoolboy chemistry classes or schoolgirl chemistry classes, yeah, where you you set a title, an objective. You decide on the equipment that you need, the materials that you need. Then the method. Then the you look at the results of your experiment, and then you make a con conclusion, yeah. So this is basically formulating by function. So, how we s it's based on the idea that ingredients that we use in our perfume, the materials we use in our perfume, have four basic functions. Yeah? One is that they are heart materials. They form the heart. So, I'm going to use a simple example, but it applies to very complex examples as well. Let's say we're going to make a rose. If I go to the materials over there that have rose on them, phenyl ethyl alcohols, citronellol, geranial, geranial acetate, etc., and I mix them all together, what will my result be? What will they smell like? Rose. Because each individual component smells a rose. So the heart materials smell of the basic title of our perfume. So if I were, if I were making a leather perfume, 
and I got leather materials, smelling materials, castorium, labdanum, indole, phenol, mix them all together, I get a leather smell. But maybe not a nice leather smell, maybe not a nice rose smell. So the heart and materials that smell of the theme of that perfume. So, that's my heart and my perfume. The next thing we want to do is to decorate our perfume. So the next function, group of functional products, are the modifiers, the things that decorate our perfume. So these are like the adjectives in language. Fresh rose. Yeah? Green rose, natural rose, soft rose. The, the modifiers are the thing that give the character. Yeah? The heart may be similar in two different perfumes, but by changing the modifiers, it looks quite different. So, um, like two girls, two identical twins, getting into the shower, they look exactly the same. They get out, one puts on a bunny uniform and the other puts on a policewoman's uniform, they look quite different, yeah? So... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but if you actually think about it, the clothing aspect of it is actually very small compared to the heart, yeah? but it has a big difference on the total impact. So if one wears red and one wears yellow, yeah, then there's, a there's quite a difference in the feel of that perfume, even though the heart is the same. Yeah? So the modifiers are very important, but less in terms of, of quantity. Yeah? Now, so, very often they form the top notes, yeah? but not necessarily. The next thing is that we now have s things that smell of our heart and things that do not smell of our heart. Yeah? So we will very likely have a disconnect. So they need something to bridge, bridge them together. Yeah? And for that, to fill in those spaces to form the bridge, we call these materials blenders. So we get a more unified smell. What we now have is a two-dimensional perfume. Yeah. We have our fresh green rose and it's smoothed off. But we now want to give it a third dimension. And to give this third dimension, we use materials that have a bit more depth, a bit more longer odour life, yeah? And these materials are called fixatives. I got this from Guy Robert, yeah? The father of Francois, yeah? When I went to a talk in London that he gave, yeah? And he, he, he talked about fixatives, and he said the problem with fixatives, everybody thinks of fixatives as making things last longer. But it's not about that. It's about giving this third dimension of time, this depth, yeah, and, and it can make a perfume. Yeah? 
And if any of you have ordered perfumes, if you work in a cosmetic company, you order perfume from a, from a company, they send you samples. The biggest complaint is always, anybody guess? Doesn't last long enough. Yeah? And the perfume company will say what? Add some musk to make it last longer. Yeah? Now, to some extent, that will work. If the perfume is complete, the musks are already in there as that third dimension. But if you overdo the musks, then all you do is flatten your, your perfume. Yeah? So fixatives are about making the perfume complete. Yeah? And they add... that dimension of time and that third dimension. They add the third dimension of time. They add this, the depth. This is not that dissimilar in structure. The heart, you'll see here, tends to be in the middle notes of a perfume. And very often, French perfumers refer to the middle notes as the cour, the heart of the perfume. Yeah? So it's the same, same sort of thing. The modifiers tend to be more towards the top notes. The blenders are those things that fill in the gaps. And the fixatives add this third dimension of time. Linalol on your tray I said to you was chosen because it was one of the most used materials. Yeah? The reason that it's one of the most used materials is because it's a fantastic blender. It, it's in the middle of the range of notes. It doesn't have a lot of specific character, but it has some freshness, has some floral notes, has a little bit of woodiness there, so it acts as a superb connection. Yeah? Other blenders that you, you smell, maybe, phenyl ethyl alcohol, that soft rose character. Blenders tend to have impacts of around 100, and they tend to have medium to long life spans. One hundred or less, and odor life, longer odor lives. The heart materials can be any material. Like the objective. The modifiers, by definition, their purpose is to change the smell, to decorate the smell. So they tend to be higher impact materials. Yeah. Because if they were lower impact materials, what would they be? If, if they have a low impact, they wouldn't change the, the smell very much so they would tend to fall into the blenders. Yeah? And fixatives tend to have longer, longer odor lives. And ideally, have something in common with the heart. because their purpose is to add this dimension of time. Yeah. OK. So for, for groups, any questions from that? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah OK. I want to ask Yes, please. Yes. When they say that, what, what do they mean? What do you mean by you need to give a body? Probably these fixatives, yeah. 
but it's a complete it's a complete thing it may it, if what 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 you have to do when you're doing this this is something i can use the triangle to demonstrate but if your if your perfume is out of balance you sometimes end up with something like this something missing from the middle yeah so it needs more heart or it needs more blenders yeah and it's a proportion thing you just need to look at your formula and increase that part that sits there yeah and you can smell these you can, maybe not initially but if you do this enough you'll be able to smell when when there are things missing so sometimes you smell somebody's perfume and it's just like that and there's nothing there yeah you see it see it pictorially in your mind yeah so using this this idea of there are four functions to your materials you use in a, in a perfume the first step in the method is to Make a title. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, is there any set percentage that you would use materials for the heart body fibrin? Or does it just depend on the fragrance? Okay. Yes. I, the way I would answer that, to add a bit more, is if you're painting, how much should be foreground, how much should be mid-ground and how much should be background. That, that's the weakness of the Jean Carles method. If you say one third, one third, one third, it doesn't matter because you could, you could do somebody's face as the whole picture with you know, a, a tiny amount of background. Yeah? Or you can do 90% background and your foreground is a dog that's 2% of the whole picture. Yeah. yeah. It depends what you're doing. Having said that, I'm going to give you some numbers. But <laughs> yeah. So the first step is the title. The idea of a title is that the same as if you do a thesis, yeah, is that it should be short, explain what your project is about, yeah, and big enough to put on a label, or small enough to put on a label. Yeah. So an example of a title might be Rose for Soap. Yeah. Rose for Soap. Yeah. And let's say we're doing it for Unilever. Yeah, that sums up our project. The next part of our, sorry, can you read it or? Unilever. Unilever, Unilever, yeah. Or PNG or, you know, whoever your customer is. So this enables you to say, rose for soap number one, number two, number three, number four, yeah, to do your experiments. Yeah, and you know what it refers to. Your second part is called the objective. <coughs> if you work for a perfumery company and you work in the lab, salesmen go to see the, uh, the customer and they get a, what's called a perfume inquiry or a perfume brief. And they come back and they say, we want a perfume for this customer. And they'll say what type of smell they want. The biggest problem with this is that most salesmen come back with, certainly in Thailand, fresh floral. <laughs> yeah? Is that enough? Not really, it doesn't tell you anything, does it? Yeah, fresh and floral. Um, your objective, your objective is the most creative part of your whole perfume. This is where the dream, the vision of the perfume is created. Yeah? If you 
if you go and you get an inquiry from, from Unilever, their objective, their inquiry, their brief will be a book, probably something like this, a hundred pages. What can you write about a hundred pages? What do you need to know? Small companies tend to think of when they make a product, they want it for the mass market. I want my roast soap for everybody. What do you, who do Unilever make a soap for? Mass Sorry? Mass they make a mass market, but when they give you an inquiry, they give you information about the country they live in, what the market is, what the lifestyle of people is, and not only that, they identify almost the name of the person this perfume is for. Not only an age group, but married or single, how many children, what type of dog, what she does on Wednesday evenings, <laughs> yeah? goes to the fitness club or whatever. Yeah? Because the idea is that if you, if you identify exactly who your customer is, you're more likely to be able to sell to them. If you think it's for mass market, then who are you making it for? No one. You're making it for a fictitious person. So that's why when you get an inquiry from a company like Bristol Myers, Squibb, P&G, Colgate Palmolive, Unilever, you get this huge information about an inquiry. How many samples do they want from you? Any advance? Two? Go to Unilever, they want one sample for you. There's one inquiry, there's one definite customer. If you've understood their inquiry collect correctly, there's only one answer. Yeah? But because they recognize that maybe other companies have better ideas, they will only give that inquiry to five companies. Yeah? And if you're lucky, there'll be a six outsider to keep the other five core companies, core suppliers, on their toes. Yeah. That's why the objective is the most important part of your... You can smell this perfume before you've even picked up a smelling strip. Yeah. That's where the creation happens, in that, in that vision. Everything else is just moving towards the objective. So your objective should be, for these purposes, a minimum of 50 words. Yeah? So what could we say about a rose for soap for Unilever? Anybody like to start me off? Uh, it would be, be part of it because it would be part of, of the demographics and who it's aimed at and yeah. So certainly price would, would be a part of it. Which kind of body you want to make it on? Yeah, so, so maybe it's a... Uh, yeah, bath soap. Yeah. Uh, fresh. Yeah, uh, solid bar soap, tablet bar soap. Fresh, uh, what type of rose are we going to do? Fresh, rose, rosa damascena. Like the Turkish rose or the, and the Bulgarian rose. What else could we say about it? Luxurious. Luxurious. 
Um, yeah, it would it would be a it'd be an aspect that come into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could fresh. Uh, okay, uh, fruity notes. Yeah, fruity, maybe modern. Yeah, fruity modern aspects. Uh, yes, yes. Um, uh, what we can say, family, family use, um, parents. How old are the parents? My parents. No, 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 not your parents, but <laughs> these parents, these parents, these people who are going to buy the soap. Because we assume the children are not going to buy the soap. So how old are they? Thirty-five, 30-something. Yeah, thirty somethings. How old are the children? <laughs> Sorry, but the children will have to use this as well. How old are the children? Okay, six and eight. Yeah, six boy, eight girl. Okay. Sorry? Okay, so that, that might tell us something about the type of rose. You see, the, the, this is the point. If, if we think this is going to be for the man as well, we're, we're not going to make it too, too girly. So, yeah, not too feminine. Anything else? The colour in it? Yes, colour. This is one that, that's what I was waiting for. Yeah. So what colour is this soap? It's brown. Brown, yeah. <laughs> dark, dark brown. <laughs> cream, cream, creamy pink, maybe. If, okay, if I, if I go on to like, like cars, yeah, or buildings, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, particularly with cars you can demonstrate this. If you go back 40, 50 years when car manufacturers developed cars, they, somebody designed the body, yeah, and then they got somebody else to design the wheels, but they wouldn't tell them what the body was like because this was top secret because it was a different company and they get Lucas the light people to make the lights but they tell them what the the dimensions were but they wouldn't tell them too much about the project because they, they didn't want the secret to get out yeah but modern designers think quite differently they think they've got to bring in everybody at the early stages yeah because if you're gonna make the best wheels for this car they need to understand the whole concept, yes, yeah? And if you make the lights for the car, you need to understand the whole concept. So designers increasingly are becoming more integrated into the whole process. Perfumes, it tends to, you, we're still on, on the outside, yeah? So very often customers come to you and they'll say, you know, uh, I want um, a perfume for a, for a shampoo with a, with a secret ingredient. Uh, oh, what's the secret ingredient? Can't tell you. <laughs> yeah? And you don't know as a perfumer whether that's like a, a smelly protein material or a, um, is it a material that's supposed to men split ends? Yeah? And if they don't tell you that, it's difficult to know what you should be, do, be doing. Yeah? Just, you know, negatify everything that we've 
it does. It does. It does. Yeah. So they can send you the base though to work with them. Um, how many percent? The evaluators here. How many percent customers send you their bases? Five? Yeah. Ten? Because many? Yeah, because of you. Oh, okay, that's good. That's yeah, good. Well, it's crucial, it's actually yeah. crucial, yeah. To sometimes there, there was a case like we had to work on chick shampoo. Yes. And uh, before the base came in, they just told us it is a jasmine shampoo. Yes. And uh, later on when we got the base, and the, everybody worked on a jasmine perfume, the three perfume ones. Yes. And later on when we got the base, it was a green colored base, which already had some floral note in it. Which was not identical to jasmine. So when you put the jasmine note, the note changed. Totally. Yes, yes. So we had to rework everything. Yeah. And then work on something yeah. which would smell like jasmine. So it turned out to be something different totally. Yeah. And we, we won that. Yes. Yeah. But you, the base, the base is really important. But very often you'll find yourself in the situation without a base. But you know, if you get, mostly get it, then that's fantastic. Yeah. Mostly. 50%, yeah, less than 50%, in my experience is that you get the base. But So you've obviously got good customers, forward-thinking customers, yeah, that realise that, you know, that they don't expect you to work in the dark, but m very often you are working in the dark. Do you need to know what kind of skin type the soap is meant to be for? Yeah, I mean, because this comes down to the demographics, you see. So if I were doing this rose for Japan, yeah, probably I would expect to have to have a lot of muge in there too, yeah, because of the Japanese taste. If I were doing it for the States, it'd have to be a little more punchy. Still, yeah, but the skin, the skin but that comes into it. That comes in, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Skin, so you if you were doing a beauty product, I would say yes, more so. Yeah. I mean, like you're defining the soap, your soap yeah. Table. Yes. So you need to make sure you don't put in any harsh chemicals or any harsh fragrances in. Uh, you take care of that. Mm, I suppose that applies to everything. Nobody wants harsh chemicals in there. <laughs> in there. Oh, but no, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, but, that's true. Yeah. But you know, like, you wouldn't want to put in something which is very, very concentrated. Yeah. Like oh, yeah, the, the percentage wise, it. certainly, percentage wise, yeah, would, uh, that would affect it, yeah. Because the market would determine also. What, what strength of soap they would expect. So um, I, I know that, um, for example, in, in India, people like very, very strong perfumes. Yeah? And um, I know some companies, they don't use alcohol at all. They just put it in D, straight 50% in, in DPG. Yeah? But you couldn't do that in Europe. Yeah? Why is that? Because of irritation and all sorts of things, yeah? Where where you get into trouble. Well, like yeah. <coughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, so, you're, so the market is important. That market? Within that, I would say that comes into the, yeah. So you probably get entire okay for yeah. But, but if this were for, for like a cream for L'Oreal or something, then yes, yeah, that would be like something that would, m might well come into it. Because their smell may be for a dry skin, they might want something slightly different from a greasy skin. Because the communication is that for a dry skin, it should be nourishing, and for the yeah hydrating, and for the uh, the oily skin, it should be a little bit more aggressive and taking out the oiliness, like a, a like a, a lemony sort of character or something. Yeah. Okay, not too feminine. Mm, anything else? Oh, so yeah, we want country. Country, um, city, or countryside. Yeah, would affect. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, the shape could affect it, yeah. Oval, <laughs> but easiness. <laughs> yeah, sorry? But not being funny, that, but that would actually tell you something, wouldn't it? Because 
if it were an oval shape, yeah, you might expect something a bit more general. But if it were like a rose shape, you know, like um, Crabtree and Evelyn or something, it would be, you'd expect it to be much more rosy. Yeah? Much more definitely rosy. Because the communication that you're sending with, with your perfume should be the same as the whole product. Okay. Fresh rose, luxurious. Now, what kind so of packaging, packaging would affect it. Yeah. 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 They might have. That's that's the next point I was coming on to. There might be things that they don't want, such as no animal products. And you know, sometimes they don't want animal products in their perfume, but they make the soap from tallow. <laughs> yeah. Which is really annoying, yeah? <laughs> tallow is made from uh, beef fat or pork fat, yeah? So, no animal products. Maybe something in the smell they don't want, yeah? Not spicy. Doesn't mean you can't have any spicy notes in there. You don't want a spiciness to the fragrance. Okay. So we have our objective. The next step is we move on to what? Equipment and materials. The equipment that we use for our samples is fairly standard. We know we're using beakers all the time, we're using mixers, we're using balances, we're using drops or whatever. But once that's set, yeah, we don't have to worry too much about that. But what we're interested in is materials. So the materials fall into what, how many groups? Four groups, yeah? So we want our heart materials. Where will we find our heart materials for this perfume? Anything in rose, yeah? So we start from anything in rose. And something else we'll be interested in is what? Stability of that material in soap. Suitable for soap. So we could, we could look at the, uh, the perfumer's workbook or we could look at our display on materials that we have at work and make a list of all the materials. Phenol ethyl alcohol, let's say, PEA, geraniol. Sorry? Geraniol, uh, dimethyl octanol. Geranium oil, citronella oil, yeah, could be examples, uh, diphenyl oxide, Okay, so that's our, our basic rose, rose heart. Then we come on to the modifiers. Where do we find our modifiers? We've got, what, what words have we got there that will give us our modifiers? Fresh. Fresh. Fruity. And... And luxurious, yeah. So, what notes might we use for, for to give freshness? Mm -hmm. 
green. It may be green. Were you using citrus notes? Yes, I was thinking citrus myself. Uh, may, yeah, maybe some ozone character. Yeah. So green. We go to the green, our list of green materials. Maybe cis hexanol. Because it's not very uh, long lasting, maybe we want something to support it. Cis hexanol benzoate. How about citrus? Lime? Or maybe a mandarin. Lime. Mandarin. Bergamot. Or maybe we could choose to read, not necessarily have to pronounce it. Right. Well, that's right. Remember, that list could actually be 200 ingredients. So you really want to identify the materials. And how do you identify them? You know what you're putting in the heart. According to your objective. Is this closest to my objective? Yeah. If two materials smell similar, so you have to pick one and that will blend well with your heart material. Is that so? That's what your blenders are for, but yeah. But that's that's a factor that comes in into but it, let's yes. Say I'm picking up geranium oil and EPA. Yes. For instance. Yeah. So when I pick up a modifier, I should pick up something that will blend well with geranium oil and EPA. So blenders will take care of that anyway. The idea is blenders will take care of it, but yes, we look, we, we, but that's a factor that comes into it, yeah. yeah. Luxurious. Uh, fruity. So what fruity notes could we put in there? What would be nice? Yeah. Sorry? Phenyl ether acetate. Yeah, that gives a rosy... One that works really nicely in, uh, in uh, rose is a raspberry ketone. That's not the proper chemical name, but you can guess what it smells of. <laughs> yeah. Sweet, a sort of sweet raspberry note and traces. Luxurious. What could we add to there? Lactones. Something else, something else. Sorry? Um, perhaps traces of vanilla, yeah. Something else. Really, really important for soaps on the ABCs. Aldehydes, yeah, aldehydes. The, if you smell the aldehyde fluorescence and think of Lux soap, yeah, fatty notes, yeah, and the aldehydes. Okay, so now we need a group of materials for our blenders. How would we choose them? Yes. Uh, because thanks to uh, Lux soap, uh, yeah, the smell of aldehydes has become synonymous with the smell of soap. So people almost expect there to be aldehydes in a soap now. Yeah. You haven't got it in some of the older ones like Imperial Leather or yeah the older soaps, but. Since Lux, Dove, Kame, yeah, have all got to have aldehydes in them. Yeah, gives us the idea of luxury. It does smell fatty, yes, but the the aldehydes help to maybe utilise that fattiness by accentuating it, make it make it a nicer smell. Yeah. When we talk about products, I come. Uh, Onto why we do that, yeah. Blenders. 
yeah, uh, musks possibly. But what, what we're looking for something is something that links this. Something with a fresh and a floral character. Linen yeah. Linen yeah. Linalol. Another one we could use here is phenyl ethyl alcohol, PEA. Particularly good because we have PEA actually as our heart and it can act as a blender too. Yeah? And it has a little bit of greenness. Before linalol, linalol was available from about the 1950s as a synthetic, before that perfumers used bergamot oil as, as the universal blender. And it was almost like a solvent. So you made your formula to 75, and then to make it up to 100 you just added 25 of bergamot. Yeah? One of the main constituents of bergamot is no, is linalol and linalol acetate. Yeah, so that's why it did that. It has the fresh citrus note, has the floral character in the background with the linalol and linalol acetate. Yeah, and so would act as an excellent blender. Maybe you could use something like uh, hydroxy citronella. <clears throat> another, another blender. The, uh, the good. I put that there, but we could use it here too. No, we can use it here too. Because that would add be a link between this, the, light, the citrus notes and the, the floral character. Yeah. And, make, and also make it, uh, there was another word I put in there, was modern. Yeah. It makes it more modern, yeah. gives it a more modern aspect. Okay, and then our fixatives. <coughs> the musks will add as, as a blender too, but They'll also be important for our fixatives. Anything with a long lasting rose smell? We have something called rose crystals, or, yeah. Um, I, I actually forget what ours are called. What? Rosone, thank you. Rosone. Okay. Like rose oxide, rose oxide would, would be in be in the heart, but because it's so intensely strong, I would tend to put it more in the modifiers. Because it's it's very very metallic, so if you put too much in there, it's going to be uh, overdone. Yeah, no, uh, th this is why, this is, it's, it's, sometimes it's called rose crystals, okay. sometimes it's called rose acetol, rosalin, trimethylphenyl carbonyl acetate, uh, trichloromethylphenyl carbonyl acetate, um, has many, many names, yeah. Um, because I work with more than one company, I get confused about which one, <laughs> which one we have, yeah. But, No, no, this is uh, completely synthetic. It's a synthetic, uh, yeah, yeah, compound. Um, for not for soap, no, 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 no problem. Rosone, um, another one here, uh, guaiac wood oil. Has a rosy character. 
and some woody nests and last a long time. Yes. Okay. Something something that I missed, I should have brought out in the objective, was what type of soap is this? Because there are a few methods of producing soap. The method that's used by Unilever and um, the big the big brands for tablet soap is they make the soap chips. So soap chips are made by mixing sodium hydroxide with oils and fats. So it, they're highly alkaline for uh, several days after they're made. So when you make it with chips, the saponification is complete and the, the chips are neutral. So there's generally not a, a problem with that. But if you use what they call the cold process or a hot process, the, the oils are mixed with the sodium hydroxide so the reaction is going on. And then after saponification starts to take place, it starts to become thick, then you add the perfume. So there's still free alkali, and that can affect, can affect the perfume. So for things like lemongrass, for example, in a cold process, so go very dark brown very, very quickly. Yeah. So that does affect it. But I'm assuming here this is a, a soap chip. Yeah, a soap chip. Uh, It could, be, it could be, particularly for translucent, because some of our materials will make it cloudy. And that's where it's like really important to have the base. Because the customer goes all to the expense of making a, a clear soap or a clear shampoo, yeah? And your perfume makes it cloudy, so. So you should know what kind? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But often you don't. So that's the fun of it. <laughs> okay, so. So that's our choice of materials. So have you all got that? Yeah, have a coffee and then uh, we'll continue. Sorry, I, I can talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> no. Lights, camera, action. Okay. So we, we've been through the first steps, yeah, title, objective. Now we're on, we've done the equipment and the materials. Next is the method. And the method works very simply. It, it's the same four steps. We, we build our, the heart of our perfume. From our list. But we only choose three, maximum four materials. We just want three or four materials from the heart. And then how much, so we, we look at our objective and we choose the best three to four matches we get. Then how much do we add of each? If we have a feel for it, then we, we just do it, we try it. But don't overthink it, just try it. Try one, 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 and one. Yeah? And if something is obviously wrong, it will stick out. 
yeah? Compare it to your objective, and then increase or lower, yeah? The quantities. So what you'll eventually get is your, your heart, and you want about maybe a minimum of 20 drops so you can mix it properly which will be something like 40% of your perfume. <laughs> Sorry? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to deny I ever s said them after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then our next step is to modify and we choose one material from each of our adjectives, from our modifiers. So we want one from fresh, one, one from luxurious, and one from fruity. We try them, we mix them, yeah. The purpose for making 20 drops was we need enough yeah, so that when we modify it we just don't drown it in the modifiers yeah? and some of these materials because they are strong we may only want 10% solutions of them and modifiers maybe we only want 5 to seven drops. Ten to fifteen percent, something like that. Is our formula. When you're making these samples, are you making them in separate units or are you making them all in one? Yeah. Something that, that I'm I'm gonna come on to, um, probably not today now, but um, was that like yesterday when we did that first ex exercise? we did what we call sub-compounds, yeah. yeah? And then we, we did a final mix. And I, I never actually did smell that final mix, so... I, you got caught up. They're still sitting there waiting <laughs> to be mixed. So they're nicely matured now. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a shame. Okay, so so that we did subcoms, so we can do it. We can do it like that. Yeah, yeah, and that helps us to sort of uh, get the balance a bit better. Yeah. So the separate, kind of separate accords. Yeah. Yeah, but it's up to you. Yeah, it's up to you. You can do it like separate chords or separate. Yeah. Then we go on to our blenders. Five to seven drops. Try try one drop. Then you find you spoilt it, and then you need ten percent solution. Yeah, and then put it in. Yeah, that, that's another. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah. You, uh, yeah. If you're doing it sub compounds, you probably want to do these steps and then mix them, yeah. and then go on. Yeah, then do the blenders. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the blenders choose only two to three blenders. Because these materials tend to be lower impact, yeah, you can usually get away with quite a lot of this. You'll maybe want 10 to 12 drops, something like 20 to 25% of your compound. And then last but not least, the fixatives.
Again, just two to three materials. All the time, your reference is the, is the objective. Yeah. So does this mean that I say you should only have 12 ingredients or 12 materials in your perfume? No. For the first experiment, yes. Yeah. You get, you know how your perfume works. When something is wrong, you find it out and you can repair it. But if you, if you try, if you use like 15 materials here, 10 here, 15 here, when it goes wrong, you have no idea where, where it went wrong. But you also know how your perfume works. This is an important point. Yeah. Many, many, uh, many perfumes that perfumers make, the perfumer doesn't really know how they work. Yeah? So he doesn't actually know which material is really crucial to the formula and which is not. And this helps you to know which material actually is the core of your perfume and which is just like a, a decoration or a, um, a, an aid to the other materials. Does that make sense? Or yeah? Yeah. yeah. Because uh, some perfume formulas, um, I write formulas maybe my average is probably between 30 and 50 materials, but occasionally goes up to 70, 80 materials. And if I'm really lucky, I get away with three or four. <laughs> but that's, that's a rare one. That's a rare one. Yeah. yeah. There, something that uh, I'll, do, I'll do later is that um, if you have only a few materials in your formula, then the quality of those materials is, must be spot on every time. Because a small change in one material in a small formula changes the whole thing. Yeah? Because it, because, um, let's say it's 25% of the formula one material, changes a little bit, the whole formula changes. If, if you have six or seven rows of materials, one changes a little bit, Nobody notices. Yeah. Yes, Steve. Um, every perfumer has his own secret ingredients, which would avoid that particular perfume or fragrance from being copied, right? Yes. So no, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry. where would you add those materials? Half, blenders, fixators, whatever. Or they could be anywhere. They could. They could be anywhere in the formula. Um, but we we do have a material that we will introduce to you. We call it the PWX factor. It's on our little thing. Um, and it work, I'll, I'll explain how it works. And you can actually reproduce it yourself. But uh, our PWX factor has about 700 ingredients. So it's, yeah. And so it's not easy to reproduce. ingredients would the perfume generally put to avoid any coffee being there? Well, that, that's a factor that comes into it. But um, I. I think it's more important to worry about getting the smell right than it is to worry about protecting it because yeah if you if you worry about protecting it too much then you you like you go off on a tangent But, but you, can do, you can do that effectively yourself, yeah? By maybe, you know, you have local producers that produce a certain essential oil in, in small quantities, yeah? That you can build in. But if you build them in... Yes, yeah, yeah. Like Chanel have special distillations of materials for their, yeah, for their perfumes. So... So now we have, oh, so that's method, that's method. So now we, we, we've made our perfume, we've made our sample, and now we, we smell it. And how do we si decide whether it's good or, good or not? Thank you. I thought you were going to say, go and ask Steve and say, is it nice? <laughs> 
So if you follow this system, yeah, if your objective is, is solid, yeah, what your objective is, is a little checkbox that you can go through and say, And so, what your objective is, is a little check sheet. And you just go run through it and you say, okay, is it creamy? Okay, yeah. Is it pink? Yeah. Bar soap? Yeah. Fresh? Yeah. For soap? Yes. Luxurious? Yes. Fruity? No. Not really for family use. Yeah. So that checklist tells you what you now need to do. Yeah? And you go back. So how do I make it more family oriented? Yeah? So you never have to ask anybody if your perfume is good or not. Yeah? Because this is where the this is where the creation happened. Yeah? And you're just trying to meet that that objective. So that's your result. Your result is to compare to objective. And I know after today, some of you will still come to Steve and Ryan and say, is it good? So what's our answer? Uh, what was your objective? Yeah, yeah. I'm not a perfume critic. Yeah? If, if you give me something that smells like baby poo, yeah, and I say, what, your, what was your objective? You said baby poo, and I say, great. <laughs> yeah? So, yeah, that, that's what determines whether it's good or not, as far as I'm concerned. So, then we come on to our conclusion. And our conclusion will be, OK, that's, then it meets the objective. So pass. And we test in the product. Yep. So it doesn't mean all the work's finished, but we test in the product, see if it works. Yeah, maybe we have to do some more modifications. If it doesn't pass, not pass. Yeah, we go back to. Yeah. There. So I think you actually covered this a little bit, but I'll do it again. So it is possible, of course, you'll make your first sample and it will be spot on first time. And there are three occasions when this happens. Anybody like to guess what those three occasions are? Extremely lucky, one. lucky, yeah, fluke. When you're extremely Two is you're a genius. <laughs> and number three, Excellent. yeah, fluke, that's the number one. You haven't got an objective uh, written down, yeah? <laughs> You haven't got an objective written down, so you've changed your objective to meet your results, <laughs> which is more likely the <laughs> more likely the uh, yeah. Yeah. So, sorry. Oh no no don't. Yes. So so what you say is did not pass, but fantastic smell for next project. Yeah, yeah. This is why we say don't throw any of your samples away yeah. because they might come in useful later 
I mean, uh, every, every, it's not every year, but every, every year or so, yeah, the cupboards get full, yeah, and it's time to throw some samples away. But always smell the samples before you throw them away, because you might find something that there that you thought was not interesting at the time, 12 months later smells really, really good. Yeah. And it may not be, it may, may you know, it may, may smell like, um, Tarm Academy or something, but you might think, oh, that's a fantastic note to use for a, a men's perfume for later. Okay, so that's now workshop. Do the same as you did yesterday. Start with a mind map. Yeah. Give it a title. Write your objective from the mind map, identifying it and imagining it as a checklist. Yeah. So when, when we smell your results today, we want to smell your results compared to your objective. Yeah. Yesterday we tried to guess your objective. Today we want to see your objective and then see if you can meet the, the objective. Yeah. So, if yeah. So general rule. If yeah, yeah. If you if you're making a rose, you cannot use the rose fluorescence. If you're making a jasmine, you can't use the jasmine fluorescence. Yeah, but you can use a rose fluorescence in a jasmine. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have to use rose from the the uh, the single materials on the outside. Yes. Yes. Well, no, here we're testing against objectives. So we we. Yeah, we smell them and yeah, but, we but no, we're not going to guess because we see the objective and then say, does it meet the objective? We're not guessing today. It wasn't guessing, it was like... <laughs> <laughs>